Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, we're going to replay our one-hour time slot during the Knives Live 2022 24-hour stream uh, on November 4th and 5th. Uh, this is a uh, this is the second annual Knives Live twenty uh, four hour live stream to benefit knives uh, uh, kniferights dot org. Now this was put together by our good friend Shane Gables with the help of Kev of Lefty EDC as well as John Evans and a number of others. Uh, it is an outstanding event that brings together uh, over twenty four of our favorite trusted voices in knife YouTubery. And uh, we're here to talk all about knife rights. And um, on this show, I have um, lucky enough to have Doug Ritter to talk about knife rights on. And then halfway through the show, we get uh, Carrie Orifache of Off Grid Knives joining us. Now, Carrie gave us two different uh, donation packages, uh, which we give away during the show. So uh, a good time was had by all. Please check out, uh, take take a little bit of time, go back and check out all of the uh, different hours from Knives Live. It is, uh, man, people were going into the wee hours of the night and uh, it was a spectacle to behold. So uh, here we go, uh, Knives Live and our Knife Junkie podcast portion of the 2022 Knives Live 24-hour broadcast. Do you carry multiple knives, then overthink which one to use when an actual cutting chore pops up? You're a knife junkie of the first order. Welcome back to Knives Live 2022. I'm Bob DeMarco of the Knife Junkie Podcast. And today we're going to be talking with Doug Ritter. And we also have Carrie of Off Grid Knives joining us later. But, you know, the main thrust of this whole event is to celebrate and raise funds for knives, uh, knife rights. And KnifeRights.org has a, uh, a very special place in my heart because it has allowed me to... Uh, to, to legally own one of my favorite knives. We're going to get to that in a little while. First, I just uh, would like to thank uh, uh, the guys over at Shredder, Jonathan, Ezekiel, et al., and the family. Uh, such a charming, awesome family. And um, it was great to see them uh, back up and on the air. Um, I know they have some kinks to work out before they can be doing that all the time. Uh, but it was great to see them. And, uh, uh, man, it makes me uh, wistful for uh, California. It looks so beautiful there. Uh, but uh, but here we are. I hear Doug. Hey, Doug, how's it going, sir? Hey, always a pleasure. <clears throat> I've been Late. I've been on a few of these. I'm not sure my voice is going to last. Oh, oh, I don't know. I I think it probably will. If if the past is is any indication of the future, um, yeah. The, the so you've been on a number of these uh, live streams uh, so far. Uh, talking about knife rights, and we're going to talk all about it. First, I have to ask you what you're carrying in your pocket, uh, Doug Ritter. Okay, so it might surprise you that I'm carrying a mini with the uh, with the jade. Oh, okay. I got a little squirt. I got my usual keychain of stuff. Nice. That's so, all. so a full size and a mini I had uh, today, I had to go into work. And uh, so I carried my mini uh, with the, uh, I put a little uh, bug out clip on it, uh, carried this mini. This was actually a gift from you. I don't know if you remember that, but thank you very much. I love this knife, cherish it. And it's uh, a great EDC. But when I came home in honor of Knives Live, I put on the fixed blade and actually I just took it off so I could be showing it off. But I love this uh, Mark III. Oh. Uh, I think this is a, a really, really like great fixed knife. Yeah. So how, how is the uh, how is the popularity of the fixed blade compared to the folder? Not even close. Um, I'm not sure why, because everyone who gets one loves one, but the fixed blade, the Mark III, is easily our slowest seller. Um, and and it and it's weird. Um, Everyone who gets one and uses it, it's like, oh, my God, this is great. Just like the folder. Um, but it's a slow mover for us. You know, it's a little more expensive. Uh, that's a big chunk of S45 VN. Um, but 
That, well, that, most of us with is. most of us with urban. Sorry for interrupting. Most of us with urban or suburban lifestyles can't can't don fixed blades as as well or as easily as uh, folders. Uh, we got Tom Bunny Hunter uh, saying, "Hey, Doug, how's it going, Tom Bunny? Good to have you here." Knives 101. I want slash need to get one of the carbon fiber exclusive Ritter Hogue RSKs. Yeah, uh, that's with is that with the Magna Cut? Yeah. All right. That, All was, right. that was a sprint run. It did it did incredibly well. I mean, that's the most expensive RSK we've ever done, and it sold out in a few hours. Um, so you know, we learn and we move on, and you know, we'll see. You know, I as you know, I have a policy of not discussing future products, yes. but um, let me assure you there are future products, and I think people are gonna be really excited about it. Uh, Hero Sticks is saying, in addition to donations, does a portion of purchasing a Ritter knife from the website go to knife rights? Just curious. Good question. So it doesn't directly go to knife rights. In other words, we don't set aside, you know, 5% of sales. But I spend about 95% of my time on knife rights work. Having the, the sales of my RSK knives are what allow me to do that. If I didn't sell those knives and get the income from selling those knives, I couldn't devote the time necessary to make knife rights work. So not directly, but indirectly, yeah. Um, I can't do knife rights without the sell, sale of my RSK knives. And, you know, it, it's great that I need to sell a knife that is really nice and I'm not shilling for, you know, crappy knives just, <laughs> just to make the income. So, um, yeah, they, they are critical um, to my continued work at Knife Rights. Well, I want to get to some of your work with Knife Rights uh, in my very own state of Virginia, and I want to talk about Pennsylvania and New Jersey. But first, I want to let uh, people know that we're going to be doing two giveaways today of uh, knives uh, very generously donated by Off Grid Knives. Uh, uh, by Carrie over there. And this package includes one package has uh, the the Alpha Dog. We were just uh, watching the Shredder guys talk about how awesome this knife is, and they were not lying. And this comes with a T-shirt, long sleeve, by the way, uh, with a cool sort of retro logo. And then the other package is the Stinger XL, except it's all black. This one's mine. I didn't want to take it out of the box. So you get it nice and fresh. Uh, with a with a very cool camo hat with their off grid logo, the regular cool. one, yeah. Nice so uh, we'll be doing that in, in, in the offing, and that'll be uh, hashtag off grid. Um, so I want to start, uh, Doug, by saying thank you uh, because of your efforts. I was able to purchase this beautiful heretic out the front. Uh, this is an X. Uh, manticore with the recurve blade. I love this knife, and uh, it is a total uh, luxury item, total luxury good that I wouldn't have been able to get myself uh, and treat myself to if it if it weren't for knife rights. Uh, tell us what happened in Virginia July 1st. So first back up a little. We had uh, over the past six years passed two bills in Virginia, uh, both of which were vetoed by two different governors. Um, so Virginia has been frustrating. Um, after the last election, Virginia's elections are off years. Um, we saw it as another opportunity to try and get it done this time. Um, and it's important to, to recognize that uh, while one house was Republican, the other house was Democrat, um, and we still managed to get uh, a majority of uh, uh, unanimous vote out of one house, like two votes negative in the other house, and a governor who's willing to sign it. Hmm. Um, and, and part of the reason that we were able to get the bipartisan support is it's a criminal justice reform issue for those on the left. It's a criminal justice and second amendment issue for those on the right. Um, and it in, in Virginia it was a huge jobs issue because Blue Ridge Knives is in Virginia and they're the world's largest knife distributor and they couldn't sell automatic knives. So, you know, all around it, it, we had good arguments and it finally all came together and we had a governor that was willing to sign it. You know, every state's a little different, 
But, you know, six years of effort, two vetoes, we finally got it done. It's, it's perfectly shows off what it takes to get things done. You got to show up and you got to keep showing up until you get the job done. And that's what we're all about. We're about showing up at the state house. We're about um, persevering and, and just, we're, I'm stubborn. I don't give up very easily. <laughs> Well, thank you. I think we I think I speak for all of us when I say that. Uh, why are automatic knives so controversial? Um, it goes back to uh, an article in the Women's Home Companion in the 1950s uh, titled The Toy That Kills. Um, there's a copy on our website um, that sparked a, you know, a totally made up uh, crises about switchblades, uh, Hollywood, uh, Broadway, both hopped on and started demonizing the knives. And eventually that resulted in the Federal Switchblade Act. And, you know, the the restriction on automatic knives, um, switchblades in 26 states. <clears throat> so, you know, we've been, we've been rolling back uh, those since we first started in 2010 on our state advocacy uh, in New Hampshire. And oftentimes it's just a question of explaining to people and showing legislators, you know, this knife doesn't open any quicker than all these other knives that are perfectly legal. Uh, none of these knife laws made any sense. They didn't make sense. There were groups of uh, gangs running around with switchblades um, like West Side Story. I mean, that that's all just made up. Well, that's uh, how we ended up with switchblade laws. Yeah, yeah, d just a moral panic of some sort over d just this uh, manufactured moral yeah, panic. Manufactured moral panic. Well, uh, the last gentleman who was just up uh, was saying thank you, and he finds it infuriating that states would would uh, go to such lengths. Uh, Alex uh, Knives and such says Doug Ritter. How was it to get uh, Missouri automatic knife legal? Uh, I remember how it wasn't legal except in the home, and then I saw it got legal. How was the process? How long did it take? So Missouri, I believe, was a two- or three-year process. It's very rare. It happens that we get something done in one year, um, and and we still have work to do in Missouri, and, and it's on the list. So we'll get there, you know. Wherever we go, the process is similar. We have to find a sponsor for the bill that believes in it. We show up, we lobby for the bill. We have to get it through both houses, get the governor to sign it. Um, there's hearings, oftentimes multiple hearings. You know, it's a process. And sometimes we time out. You know, The legislative session is over before we can get it done. Or sometimes because of leadership in, a, in one house or the other of the legislature, we just can't get it moved. But again, we come back and, and just keep hitting them with it. And if they eventually pass it because they're tired of seeing us, that's okay. I'm happy with that. I don't sure. care. Um, but like in most states, um, the majority of our bills, including Missouri, pass with large bipartisan support. And look, we're the only Second Amendment organization to get support from the other side of the aisle. And I'm, I'm pretty, pretty jazzed about the fact that we can do that. And nobody else can. And the reason is fairly simple. One is we're not guns. And mm -hmm. second is um, legislatures all know somebody, one of their constituents has gotten arrested for having the wrong knife. And so it it's, it's easy to make the criminal justice reform argument with these folks. And so, you know, we have seriously anti-gun legislators who sponsor our bills because it, it is a it is absolutely a nonpartisan issue. We get bipartisan support because of that. And we're a nonpartisan organization. It's a human issue. I mean, it's in everyone's epigenetics to love knives. Whether they know it or not, it gets uncovered at some point. Uh, whether it's their their first experience with a good bread knife and a crusty loaf or, uh, you know, if they're on the job, what have you, as JN was just thanking you being a, a, a Kansas uh, individual from Kansas, uh, you help them out uh, carrying knives for work and for hunting and for outdoors. 
um, you know, it's, it's just a kind of a crazy thing to restrict. Now you said, uh, you keep coming back, you keep coming back, you keep getting up. Um, what's going on in Pennsylvania? So Pennsylvania, um, we have been working in Pennsylvania for a decade. Uh, we've had a number of bills run that didn't get anywhere. Uh, this year, everything came together and it, we were able to get through. So a decade's worth of effort this year it got, came together. It got through the house 202 to one. It got through the Senate um, unanimously 50 to nothing. And uh, we got a very anti-gun uh, governor to sign the bill. And because we had such bipartisan support and because it wasn't guns and it, it, it will produce a lot of jobs and revenue for the state because case, of course, is located in Pennsylvania. And now they're going to be making uh, automatic knives, um, which they'll sell millions of dollars to those because we were able to get the law changed. And lest anyone think that this is easy, um, right up to the last minute, that bill almost died uh, because we had one legislator in the Senate, one senator who was just determined to make a political statement, having nothing to do with knives, having to do with firearms, and only because of uh, our local lobbyists and the pressure we were able to exert with our Senate sponsor, um, Senator Shreve Street from Philadelphia, and the relationship that we had built with the governor's staff, were we able to pressure this, this one senator to, to stop trying to amend our bill into something else and get with the program. And in literally the last few minutes, everything came together and we were able to get it done. But that that's what it takes being there with people who understand the process. You know, if you don't understand the rules, you can't play the game. And we do understand the rules and we win more often than not. One of, one of the amazing things about Pennsylvania is that was our 40th bill signed in 26 states in 13 years. I mean, I don't think any of us when we started, when I started knife rights uh, would have ever thought that 13 years later, well, 15 years later, that we would be sitting here with 40 bills signed. I mean, that's just, that's pretty incredible. Uh, so that is amazing. Um, well, one thing that knifrights.org, uh, the website uh, does besides fill you in on legislation and uh, and what's going on with uh, knife rights in terms of uh, activism, I don't like that word, but you know what I mean. Uh, is, is, we're, 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 we're activists, we're an advocacy organization. I that's mean, what I was looking for, that. advocacy. That's, that's that's what we're all about. Well, you also have uh, features on your website that might be useful to some viewers of this show. It's no secret. I love tactical knives. I've done a lot of martial arts with knives. I think it's fun. I am not a badass. I don't go out and get in fights or, you know, it's just a hobby for me. But it's a hobby I would like to continue with unimpeded. And also, um, you know, I am someone who carries a knife, thinking of it uh, as a self-defense option also. So. Uh, KnifeRights.org has uh, a great article on what to do and what not to do if you're uh, if you find yourself in a self-defense situation and you have to talk to the cop, you know, and, and you're now you're going through the legal system. And there's a uh, a mnemonic uh, called SAC, S-A-C, remain silent, ask for an attorney and do not consent to any search. Um, are Self-defense cases with knives uh, seen differently than self-defense cases with guns? Well, sometimes, uh, like like everything else, it depends. I mean, we've, we've had some self-defense cases involving knives that we've been involved with in one degree or another. Um, and, you know, it's important to remember that the Second Amendment doesn't say anything about firearms. The Second Amendment says arms. So, uh, you know, knives are arms, they're covered by the Second Amendment. And generally speaking, uh, particularly after the, the Bruin decision um, that we had this year from the Supreme Court, um, it's very hard to make a case that you shouldn't be allowed to carry a knife. And uh, 
I think all the legitimate self-defense cases that we've been involved in, uh, with one exception, all ended up going away before they ended up in front of a judge. Uh, once we help the attorney understand the circumstances, because very few attorneys are well-versed in knife laws, mm -hmm. uh, even self-defense attorneys are usually, you know, dealing with something else. Um, usually these cases go away once the prosecutor understands he's not going to win the case you know if it's not a legitimate self-defense well yeah don't use your knife when you're not allowed to i mean and that's important and and, and we have another article on the website it's all about um what to do when you actually have to use your knife in self-defense and what circumstances it's allowed in. You need to understand what the law is in your state for self-defense because it varies by state and what's acceptable in one state may not be acceptable in another. Um, the last thing you want to do is use any sort of weapon. I don't care whether it's a knife, a gun, or a stone um, in self-defense. Ideally, you come up with some manner to solve the problem without having to because it's it's an incredible pain and struggle and it can be really really expensive which is why we work with us law shield and you can join us law shield uh through knife rights and get a discount because we wanted our members just like so many gun owners to have the backup of knowing that if they should use their knife or firearm or anything else in self-defense that they pay, they pay, excuse me, they dial an 800 number, they get a lawyer who's well-versed in the law and there is a limit to what they're ever gonna pay. They're gonna take care of your defense. I mean, you can go, you can be in the right and go bankrupt defending yourself. That's not really a win. That's yeah. not a win yeah. for anybody no. other than maybe you don't go to jail is a win, but not going to jail and becoming bankrupt is is not really a win so um we were very pleased to partner with the u.s law shield to offer folks an option uh whether it's a knife a gun a baseball bat or whatever if god forbid you find yourself in those circumstances uh i was reading that article too and i was thinking yeah man i, I don't have an attorney like i know that's something i could say like oh i want to talk to my attorney but i you know who, who's that you know is it john Fabitz, the first guy i find in the you know in the yellow pages well, uh, the but first guy but in the old this is going to be an A. Yeah, Just well, an that's a. right. Oh, um, why not? But but that's the thing. You know, we say ask for your attorney. Very few of us have a criminal law attorney that we can yeah. turn to. Yeah. So you know, you're going to have to call your attorney and get him to get a, a, a criminal law attorney on. I mean, it's it's just it's awkward at best. Mm -hmm. uh, if you join U.S. Law Shield, and there's some others, USCCA and you know, we partnered with U.S. Law Shield because at the time they were the only one who covered any things other than guns used in self-defense. I mean, they don't care. Use your fists, self-defense, it's legitimate. Yeah. They're going to defend you. Um, if if you are going to think that somehow or other you may use your knife, your gun, whatever in self-defense, you owe it to your family to carry some sort of insurance that's going to protect you because you know defending yourself will bankrupt you unless you're awfully awfully rich you yeah. know all you have to do is look at at what happened with rittenhouse or with the the folks uh who are standing on their stoop with their firearms you just do not want to be put in that situation and have to pay for an attorney there's some really good attorneys out there but they're not cheap so when you do U.S. Law Shield with us or one of the other ones, you know, you have an attorney who's going to protect you and you don't have to write the check. And, and that's 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 part of being a responsible uh, gun owner, knife owner, if you're going to carry for whatever reason or simply if you, ex you know, if, if you don't carry, but you have a shotgun in your house because someone might be an intruder, you need to have the protection of one of these legal protection outfits. And as I say, Knife Rights signed up with US Law Shield. We get a small uh, dollar contribution when you sign up with them and you get a discount because you 
came through us. So all that's on the, the homepage of the of kniferights.org. Uh, this conversation makes me nervous because it's one of those uh, conversations that you, uh, if all goes wrong, you remember, you think back to, I remember Doug told me about that. And uh, because, yeah, that that in if you're casually and nonchalantly carrying uh, knives like I do, and, and I, I shouldn't say that I... That doesn't mean I don't respect them, but I, you know, it's, it's a part of my, my thing. And, uh, and I do think of them, uh, as a, as a self-defense option. Well, uh, to not have that, uh, backed up is, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be nerve wracking until, you know, maybe I check that out or I stop carrying knives and I know that's not going to happen. You know, that's not an option for a lot of us. I mean, yeah. You know, I put my pants on and my knives go in my pocket and that's, you know, it's just, happens automatically. I have to remember if I'm flying. Oh, nope, not today. <laughs> um, but but for most of us, carrying a knife is just automatic. Um, but if you're carrying a knife and you're even thinking this might be my self-defense weapon or my last ditch in self-defense, I mean, you need to protect yourself and your family. It's not very expensive, um, you know, given what some places charge for coffee. It's the cost of a few coffees a year. Right, so right. Um, I, I think it's a worthwhile investment and responsible for anyone with a family. How, um, okay, so uh, just the Ultimate Steel wrapped up uh, a couple months back. Uh, we're now doing Knives Live. Uh, but how does one uh, get involved with knife rights, become a member, donate throughout uh, the regular, throughout the year? So, you know, right now we've got Knives Live going on. Um, you guys are great. Uh, you can go to, to kniferights.org slash donate, uh, make a $10 donation or greater. And for every $10, you get a chance at uh, right now five and possibly six grand prizes, um, three of which include uh, your choice of one of my RSK folders. Um, you can join. Uh, it's $35 for an annual membership. Uh, for that $35, uh, Knives Live 2022 will give you four chances in the drawing. Um, we have our annual uh, Ultimate Steel, as, as you noted, um, that will be coming up next spring. We just wrapped it up. I think I shipped the last knife out uh, just a few weeks ago. Um, and And the other thing that folks can do is you know holidays are coming up uh if you shop on amazon or you want to get good deals on good shop uh you can sign up using our registration and uh knife rights foundation as as your partner in this and we get a portion of everything you sell we get we get a really nice size check from amazon every quarter from folks who have done exactly that to spend money on Amazon or spend money with Good Shop, and with Amazon we get a half a percent of every penny you spend on wow. any of the 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 products that are identified with being part of this, and and that adds up to a lot of money. I mean, are if those you shop knives? at Amazon, this is a way you can help us without even trying very hard. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Doug. Are those uh, just knives, knife purchases on no. Amazon or uh, anything. Just anything, anything, anything? OK, all just right. got to have a little tag on it. And all the uh, there on our home page, there's a link. Uh, go there. It explains how you sign up on Amazon for Amazon Smile with us as as uh, the organization that, that gets the benefit. Um, uh, just backing up a little bit. I didn't have a chance to talk to there you. you at, oh, there, there we go. I didn't have a chance to talk to you at Blade Show this year or afterward. Um, just switching gears for a second. What was uh, what was the most exciting thing you saw there? What what about uh, Blade Show this year? Uh, you're like, oh my god, that was a hundred thousand years ago, Bob. Um, sure feels like that. Um, honestly, um, you know, Blade Show for us is, or for me is mostly about meeting with manufacturers, uh, talking to uh, uh, makers about donating knives for our ultimate seal. Um, it's just a blur. Honest to God, I, I couldn't tell you any particular knife that stood out to me because, uh, 
you know, when I first started going blade show before knife rides, it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, now it's mostly work. I mean, it's a hard, you know, it's four days, four and a half days of, of just slogging through and meeting as many people as we can and talking to as many makers as, as we can. You know, if, if we're going to raise money in the ultimate seal, we got to have the custom makers and the manufacturers donating knives. And that's work. That's I spend I spend the vast majority of my time not working on getting bills passed, but raising the money hmm. so that we can work on getting bills passed, pay for my travel and Todd Rathner, our, our <clears throat> lobbyist travel. I mean, we both travel 100,000 miles a year. Um, unfortunately, that costs a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, we had James Moore just saying hello and thank you for all your work uh, uh, for the industry. And uh, we had a couple of other people also uh, complimenting you and thanking you. I appreciate uh, it very, very much. Yeah, I, I think um, that, that is a, a cool thing to see at uh, um, is just how everyone seems to know you and everyone seems to be appreciative uh at least in that in that context you know um yeah i mean it's it's humbling that we've gotten to that point uh when we started when i started knife rights everyone including my wife thought i was crazy uh <laughs> the vast majority of people told me i was nuts and there was no way we were gonna get any you know knife ban repealed um and and it was hard it was hard the first few years because we had no track record. Now with 40 bills signed, we have a track record. If you donate to knife rights, whether you donate as a, as a knife maker, uh, knife manufacturer, um, or just a guy donating a few bucks, you know, you're making an investment in an organization that gets things done. And look, there's not, you know, there's Todd, me and my wife. I mean, that's the organization. Wow. That's it. Um, and, you know, and, and, and even watching the nickels, you know, we, end, we have to raise at least $300,000 a year. And probably we need to raise more than that next year because uh, our expenses are going up. And so it's, it's both getting harder to raise the money because everyone's facing, you know, the, the hidden tax of inflation right now. And it's costing more for us to do things. So it's a, you know, it's a double hit. Um, but we're going to do our damnedest to continue. I mean, there are 12 states already on our target list. Hmm. Um, we'll be going to the National Assembly of Sportsmen's Caucuses Summit here in a couple weeks in uh, Bozeman. We hope to pick up a couple more states there. And... You know, depending upon what happens next Tuesday, there may be some more opportunities, both in states that uh, we haven't quite been successful in or as successful as we'd like to be, and in states which up till now have been just basically, let's not bother. Let's so, talk about New Jersey. Oh, New Jersey. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So uh, New Jersey, in, in reaction to the Bruin decision by the Supreme Court, which basically said that that um, the state can't uh, subjectively uh, prevent you from carrying a, a firearm outside the home. Uh, it can't put up barriers that are subjective. Uh, a number of states, anti-gun states, have been passing legislation, most of it totally unconstitutional based on the, the opinion in, in, in Bruins in an attempt to keep people from being able to practically carry. Okay, we'll give you a permit, but we're not going to let you carry anywhere. Right. Um, and New Jersey, because they don't want to be second bad to anybody, decided not only were they going to do this for firearms, they were going to do it for weapons. Not just firearms, not a hand, but weapons. Well, under New Jersey law, a knife is considered a weapon if you're carrying it. So all of a sudden, we were faced with a situation where anyone who is carrying a, 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 a pocket knife or any kind of knife in significant portions of the state, just going about their business, could potentially be arrested. And New Jersey is the only state in the nation where every knife violation is a felony. 
So we're talking about carrying your pocket knife and suddenly be facing a felony. Um, and not just pocket knives. I mean, just as an aside, you could be carrying a baseball bat. You could be carrying a screwdriver or crowbar. And you could be subject to being arrested for carrying a weapon. Um, working with the, uh, the, the New Jersey affiliate of the NRA, uh, we're, we're very good friends with them. Uh, and Scott Bach there, uh, we were able to get the Senate to amend the bill to take the, the weapons part out. And so now it's a question of getting the assembly uh, to amend their bill similarly. And, you know, I think we have an opportunity to do that um, because that would, that would have been just terrible. That would have been just terrible. And the reason we were able to accomplish that was the years of working in New York and New Jersey uh, with people there and making the connections. So when this happened, we were in a position to say, hey, we got to stop this. Yeah. And we had the people and the connections to, you know, so far looks like we will be able to do that. Um, that, does, that doesn't happen just, oh, something's bad. Let's yeah. walk in and fix it. Um, and someplace like New Jersey, New York, it takes years to build those relationships. And yeah, we've been working very hard at that for many years. They're just dead set on it. We have uh, Kerry from Off Grid Knives. We're going to talk to him in just a minute. But before we do, uh, we had one question I wanted to ask you. Jim, could you bring that one back up? I believe his name was, my name is just Bill. And he wanted to know, how do you know when to quit on a state and which ones to chase and pursue? So quit is not part of our vocabulary. I mean, it just isn't. Um, we may step back for a year or two, wait for a change in the political, you know, who's governor or what, who's in charge of a particular uh, house uh, of the legislature. But yeah, quit. We don't ever quit. That's not that's not in our makeup. Quit. Quit just isn't there. And as far as when we know to do something, uh, it's it could be any combination of things. It starts with finding a sponsor or for a sponsor, seeing what we've done elsewhere, they file a bill and we go knock on the door and say, hey, we saw you filed this knife bill. And oh, by the way, you need to fix this and amend that. And we will work our butt off with you to get the bill passed. There, there are a lot of times that a legislator files a bill because a constituent has asked him with no real intention of following it through. They just want to be able to tell their constituent, well, I filed the bill, you know, yeah. it didn't go anywhere. Well, it's not going to go anywhere unless there's someone there lobbying it. And that's what we're for. And sometimes they file a bill and it's poorly written and we need to amend it because of that. And sometimes they file a bill and it, it, it's like they dip their toe in the water and we go like, really, we think you can get it all done. And Wisconsin was a perfect example. In Wisconsin, a bill was filed to repeal their switch, uh, to allow people to carry a switchblade with a concealed carry license. And we got hold of the sponsor. We said, no, that's not acceptable. You don't need permission from the government mm. to carry your knife. I said, but this is what we think we can do. And they're like, oh my God, that'll never get done here. And we're like, we did it here, we did it this state, we did it in this state. And we were finally able to convince them to go along with us. And by the time we were done, we got rid of all of Wisconsin's knife bans <laughs> and passed uh, knife law preemption in the state, which got rid of all the local knife bans. Yeah, those those local we, knife bans are murder. Yeah, I mean, you cross a line on the map and suddenly you're breaking the law. I mean, that's crazy. But in order to stop that, we have to pass knife law preemption because we can't afford to go out and fight every little yeah. townships uh knife laws we we need to do it economically if you will at the state level well uh someone who has no doubt benefited uh not only uh in his own collection but in his own business uh from the work you've done with knife rights is uh carrie orifice of off-grid knives uh carrie how's it going sir hey hey guys Hey, it's good to have you here, and I want to thank you nice for. To meet you, uh, Curry. Yeah, you too. 
I want to thank you for the uh, the giveaway packages uh, you sent in. Uh, yeah. It's greatly appreciated, and uh, we talk about off grid knives a lot on this channel. And I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's only because I love them so much, you know. Uh, I it's, I usually just can't stop blabbing about stuff when I'm enthusiastic about them. Uh, but what do you? It, so you sent me uh, to to give away. Um, and so sadly it will be moving on, but you sent me this beautiful new outdoors knife. Uh, this is a, a V2 of an outdoors knife. Uh, tell us about this. Yeah. So that's the newest, uh, alpha dog it's called. Uh, so, uh, I think you have the stinger XL. It's the exact same, uh, color combination. There it is. Um, so it was so successful for the Stinger XL and people are really liking that combination of uh, colors, but it was a nice addition because I have just the regular black handle stone wash. Then we have the full blackout and then we added the coyote scales with the gray wash. And so it's a, it's a lethal combo. <laughs> the um, uh, I used to have an alpha dog and I gave it to my brother. Um, that it, so it's still in the family, uh, yeah. but um, mine didn't have this uh, same handle. It didn't have this uh, Coke bottle contouring. Yeah, um, that's a that's a new addition. What what are the things you improved on this V2? It is. So, you know, it's all about feedback and getting those reviews, talking to customers and little by little making notes. And then when we go into that production to make a, you know, a new run, always want to improve it as best we can. And so some of the, you know, we made it a little more refined and that's basically what we do every single time we come out with a new one, refine it just a little bit more, get that feedback again, and then, you know, move forward. Do they like it? Do they not? But you can tell from this handle slightly more comfortable than say the original and, you know, a little contoured on the sides and just a little more grippy, I guess. Yeah, I noticed uh, that same uh, thing on the off grid. Uh, I mean, on the uh, backcountry, uh, the when yeah. I got the Coyote backcountry, the handle is more comfortable. So, uh, a, a another V two improvement. But I've noticed yeah. on all of the folders, um, you're listening. Uh, you listened about the pocket clips. So yeah. all the screws are flat. Everything yeah. is recessed. There's yes. no hassling the pocket. And yes. and that's the kind of uh, like right. Yes. So I have the new, uh, this is, this is a prototype, the, um, the Viper that people really like. So I made a new version of the Viper. So this one's going to be coming out probably in a couple months, something like that. So, yeah. So it's always trying to improve and, you know, build upon what you already did and take the feedback. You're out in California, right? Yeah. Oh, talk about knife laws. Jeez. Yeah. What, what's it like uh, running a knife business out there? It's, I mean, because I, you know, ship all over the place, all over the country and, and, and some other countries as well. I mean, I, it hasn't hurt me uh, too much. It's really Amazon that has been a pain in the ass oh. because they freak out over knives, even if it's a camping knife and so forth. So they restrict uh, shipping into certain jurisdictions. New York is a big one. So I have all these emails from New Yorkers, you know, going mm. crazy. Why can't I buy your knife? This and that. I said, call Doug. So, <laughs> so basically, uh, you know, it's, and then I guess the, what I tried to do is then I put a legal carry category on my website. So all my knives so that people can go, if you have a problem with it, we let them know search on the website we have a uh, sorting tool and you click legal carry and boom all the legal carry you know it depends on your jurisdiction and you got as you guys know but we figure three inches and below we'll just call that legal carry for simplicity <laughs> right right uh will b wants to know uh, any other new items from off grid we can look forward to yes absolutely um so the tracker x um was a actually my very first fixed blade this is going to be the new uh tracker x so mm. it's a full flat grind compared to the first model and then again taking that feedback really contoured the uh edges of the micarta and made it way more uh, ergonomic so one of the complaints was it, it was almost level on the bottom kind of had a little bit of contouring for your hand but really drop this down in the back 
So it really locks into your hand very, very well. And then, uh, you know, change the grind a little bit. It's It comes down to a really thin edge, which is nice, but yet it still has the, you know, almost five inch thick, you know, stock. And then people love the Alpha Dog sheath, right? So it oh, has Oh yeah, this, it snaps yeah, in with a Thora tie. Exactly. So basically it's in, the similarity is, is we have this uh, attachment and we sell this separately as well, but this will come with the Tracker X, which we didn't have before. And then we added, I, I love this, and I'm going to put this on all my sheaths, is this, um, you have a thumb, like a thumb push right here. So when you're standing there with your belt, you just simply push it with your thumb. So that little lip on there is, to me, I love it. I mean, it's, yes. once once I did that for the Alpha Dog, I said, that's it, I'm going to do that on all of them. So great feedback on that. And so the new Tracker X is coming out. Jeez, everything's delayed these days, but you know, probably before Christmas, I'll say that before Christmas. Nice. Yeah. Nice. All right. So let me, let me, uh, let me detail the next, uh, uh, the next giveaway and people, uh, uh, people watching, uh, please, uh, what am I trying? I'm, I'm all stuttering too much coffee today, put <laughs> hashtag off grid in the comment and then, and then we'll do two drawings and give these two packages away. But uh, the second package is a folder and this has been a blockbuster hit for you. And it's no wonder. I love this knife. Uh, this right. is the stinger XL. This one is mine. As mentioned, we are giving away uh, a blackout version. This one you've seen on the channel a million times. Yep. Uh, such a great knife. That's a four inch blade. It's evocative of a bayonet. It has a very uh, classic sort of uh, combat classic look, but it's yep. got these nice contoured scales. Uh, so we're going to be giving this beauty away. And this uh, this is a best tech production, right? And we're going to actually be... it's not. This is oh. Uh, Taiwan. Oh, so, you know, I have I have best tech and then I use uh, Taiwan for all my fixed blades. But I have them do, I wanted this one like crazy overbuilt. And I think mm. you can see that when you put it in your hand, it's strong, it's tough. It so is. I use my Taiwan um, uh, partners to build that one. So that's a Taiwanese knife. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, all right. So so then this goes with the uh, with the classic logo. Funny because the, the retro logo is new, but I love it. Yeah. I love them both. Um, and now I have both. <laughs> uh, yeah, nice. you, you sent, you sent the hat you're wearing in the box and I, yes. I, I kind of nicked it. So, yeah. uh, sorry, everybody. Uh, but so be sure to put hashtag off grid in, in the, uh, in the, in the, um, chat and in five minutes, five minutes, we're going to give those away. Um, so Doug, uh, you know, in, in a way in the knife industry earned his bones or made his bones. Uh, making products for helicopter survival kits and putting helicopter survival kits together. This is kind of, um, you know, uh, Carrie, you, you seem to be a man of adventure as well. I'm not sure if you're a helicopter pilot, but I know you've done a lot of crazy stuff, gone to a lot of far flung uh, locations. Um, uh, Doug, tell me about uh, a little bit about how that coalesced your flying and uh, and all of that into actually making knives and becoming acclaimed for it. Okay, so so first of all, um, just to correct you, they are aviation survival kits, ah, not helicopter ah, survival kits. Gotcha. Uh, the, the majority of them end up in uh, fixed wing aircraft. Um, so way 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 back when um, I started writing for uh, the aviation consumer and aviation safety. Um, this was like. I don't know, 30 odd years ago uh, when I got out of the building business. And um, one of the first articles I ever wrote for aviation safety was about a survival kit I had built and put together for myself after a lot of research and years of, of backpacking and, and being in the outdoors. And um, it was a big hit. Um, and I ended up uh, starting uh, Equipped to Survive on the web, which is still there, though I don't do much with it, which was sort of consumer reports for survival gear. And, you know, second only to your brain, your number two survival tool is a knife. And uh, as a result of that, I was able to make connections with most of the major knife manufacturers. At that point, I really wasn't involved with the custom knife side of things, 
but uh, became friendly with with all the major uh, production knife manufacturers. And and that sort of, you know, when, when the Wall Street Journal ran their terrible, terrible article about evil, evil tactical knives in 2006, and, and I got pissed and said, you know, we're not going to turn out like Europe. Um, you know, at that point, I had the connections and I'd already started in with my own uh, line of knives with uh, Benchmade manufacturing them. So, you know, it, it all fed into that. Um, I still do uh, aviation survival kits. In fact, I just finished up a run of nine of them. And, um, you know, they're, they're, they're still highly regarded and I enjoy putting them together. It's, um, it's, it's sort of, so you, so you design and, 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 and you'll relate to this. You'll, you design knives to be used. I mean, that's why we design knives. We want people to use them. Exactly. You design survival kits in hopes that nobody will ever have to use it. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. But if yeah. they do, so it's weird. On the one hand, I sell stuff I want people to use every day. Right. On the other hand, I sell stuff that I hope nobody will ever use. Right. It's a weird dichotomy. It is. I, I, I'm uh, I'm holding Carrie's uh, uh, Cayman XL, one of my favorite off grids, but that's kind of uh, the suffix for most of your knives. Uh, but uh, this is especially uh, one that I love um, uh, because it's got to me, it's got it's got the fighter Bowie thing. But it's also I know where it, it, the Cayman was your inspiration came in uh, the crocodilian animal down in the South America. So you're t tell me the your design ethos. So uh, the Cayman specifically, um, you know, I. I'm a surfer. I surf all over the place, been all over the place. And so one of the places we would go to all the time is Costa Rica, Nicaragua, and down in, you know, Central America. And Cayman, or they don't call them crocodiles. They don't call them alligators. They're Cayman that are in uh, Central America. And always the best waves are in the river mouth. And where do the, where do the Cayman hang out? River mouth. And they disguise themselves as logs. So you have these big, like uh it almost you can't really tell what's what's a caiman and what's and so you're out in the lineup and waves are breaking and then you know guys are always looking around and then when you come in you you always look around so you're always on edge of these things and then you'd see them sitting by the thing so i always have a great close-up look and it just hit me like i gotta make a knife and, and just dedicate it to the caiman because uh you know they were uh fierce and well, scary and the right shape sure. is the shape looks just like exactly just so like i one. wanted to really replicate as close as i could and then drop a bowie on there so i've got two men of adventure who design knives for such uh for such adventures on the show that's pretty cool at one time um i think now let's give away these knives uh i think uh, we've we've waited long enough uh these packages are just dying to get out of my man cave because if not they will be assimilated and absorbed uh, and we can't do that. <laughs> All right. So, uh, uh, Carrie, since, uh, since you'll, you'll, uh, actually, uh, let's do a countdown. Uh, Carrie, go ahead. Please do a countdown from three. Three, two, one, fire. All right. All right. So this is for the, uh, alpha dog fixed blade and the long sleeve t-shirt with the retro logo. The winner is Z-Man's EDC. Z-Man's EDC, this is now yours, sir. Uh, happily, uh, presumably, sir, uh, happily get this out in the mail to you uh, on Monday, and uh, we'll we'll arrange your get. Just uh, send your uh, address to theknifejunkie.com slash uh, at Gmail. That'll do it. Um, okay, so now we're going to do another one right now. Uh, and and Doug, since uh, since this is all going to help knife rights, Doug will be doing the final countdown on this day. And today it's for uh, the Stinger uh, XL. I don't mean today. I mean, this giveaway right here is for the Stinger XL. By the way, uh, I love the chamfers on it and, and how contoured and comfortable the handle is. I forgot to mention that earlier. Thank you. Uh, and there's a pocket tab filler or pocket, yes. you know, 
that's that's also new. Okay, so this with the hat. Uh, Jim, can you bring up the the random number generator, please? And uh, as Jim readies the random number generator, uh, I will flip this sucker open and closed a few times and, and let you know that it, it is indeed drop shutty. And that is the question. All right, let's do this, shall we? All righty. All righty, Mr. Ritter. Let her rip. Three, two, one. Let's see. Who will it be? We are narrowing in. It's slowing down. Oh, boy. <laughs> Boom. Wicked Reels. Wicked it's Reels. Wicked Congratulations. Reels. Congratulations, Wicked Reels. Again, uh, send me an email with your address. Uh, that's the knifejunkie.com uh, at Gmail will do. And uh, and I will get these out to you on Monday. Uh, these are your these are your items now. And now I can now I can clean my head. Well, this one is not. This one is mine. You will be getting the black one. I do not want to put that in the yeah. box by accident. Get the, this is the one. This is the one he's getting. Yes. Boom. Yeah. There it is. That so congratulations, nice. everybody. Yes. Nicely done. Well, okay. So let's talk about what's in the offing. Uh, coming up uh, after uh, this, you know, we're going to continue Knives Live at the 3 p.m. Uh, Central. We're doing everything Central. Uh and uh, 3 p.m. Central, we have Grateful Panic, uh, Knife Reviews. That's John. He'll be coming on here. Uh, then after that, 4 o'clock, we have Kev, Lefty EDC. We have Zach, Zach Stuff at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then wrapping things up, we have Jared and Kara with Neves Knives at 6 p.m. Central. Now, um, uh, Doug, you're going to be going back on uh, another feed. Is that right? I'll be on with Zach, and I'll be on with the, the uh, Neves Knives as well. So awesome finishing oh. things off this has been you guys have been incredible um i've said this before but last year you guys had this idea it got put together um it was the most successful non knife rights organized fundraiser we've ever been involved in and by by every estimate this year is going to break that record and you know, as I mentioned, uh, we I can have all the passion in the world, but without the support of donors, knife makers, knife manufacturers, um, we can't do anything. So uh, the generosity of the folks that are watching, um, making donations, joining up as members, um, it's huge. It is absolutely huge. You are making a difference. You are allowing us to continue to forge a sharper future for for all Americans. Well, I, I, for one, am honored to be a part of it this year. I was not last year. And, uh, man, a big shout out to Shane Gables and to, yeah. um, and to Kev of Lefty EDC and to, um, John, John Evans Evan. and, yeah. and, and, and others, man, their, their, uh, efforts. Uh, I mean, it's really uh, amazing how they herded all these cats together. Now, uh, I know, uh, I know everyone was excited to be a part of it, so it wasn't, probably wasn't that hard to get people uh but man i, I really applaud uh, the effort and i'm i'm honored to be a part of it this year super yes yeah. yes indeed so uh so carrie uh when so we're looking forward to two new models possibly by christmas now now you're on the hook now yeah because definitely. uh because because three and a half minutes to fill i'm gonna i'm gonna grill you no <laughs> So, so better, is it, better you than me. Yeah, right. I like this. So, so are you, are you experiencing delays in getting stuff? Well, just manufacturing wise, you know, when you're dealing with overseas stuff, it, uh, you know, where I should have had it say a month ago and now it's just always, yeah. So there's delays. It's typical. It's not unusual, but you know, I want to get it out there, especially before the Christmas rush. So that's my goal. And, uh, you'll hear about it for sure. Awesome. Well, I'll help you get the word out, no doubt. Nice. Um, nice. Also, uh, if someone could, I'm not sure uh, if they have already, but someone put uh, Grateful Panic's link uh, in the, I'm sure it's been up there plenty of times, but uh, please, if someone would uh, put Grateful Panic's link uh, in the comments so uh, this party can continue from here on to John's site. Uh, I had a, a interesting conversation with John once about the Grateful Dead. I, had, I only went to one concert ages and ages and ages ago. And I asked if he was there and uh, and then I realized it was probably before he was born. He's a much younger man than I am. 
And uh, and I also learned uh, <laughs> on a different note, I learned that uh, um, two of my neighbors that I've become friends with over the last uh, five years uh, were also at that one random show in Ohio that I went to. So uh, everyone go to the Grateful Panic uh, uh, channel and continue with Knives Live 2022. Um, it's always fun over there and uh, and it should be it should be awesome. Now, uh, uh, Doug will be appearing again at, uh, at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Still can't get used to that, uh, Shane. <laughs> but hey, man, uh, you put it together so you get to choose the time zone. And uh, and then again at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time at uh, Jared and Kara's uh, channel at Neves Knives. And uh, you can subscribe by clicking or zapping the QR code right there that Jim so handily put up. I think that's cool. And then also remember about these grand prizes. There are five grand prizes that you could win from donating tonight. Uh, and they have a staggering amount of like really incredible knives. I mean, I'm not gonna go through them, but look, here's one box. And uh, that, those are all sweet knives and uh, flashlight thrown in there or torch, however you guys like to say it. You, you uh, flashlight junkies. Look at this. Look at these grand prizes. These are insane. Wow. And Kev of Lefty EDC has been managing all of this. God love him. And uh, he will be shipping all of these out. That cannot be inexpensive. So, um, you know, let's... As someone uh, maybe... who ships lots of knives. Yeah. Uh, and as Kerry can probably as well. Uh, yeah, it's not inexpensive to ship a lot of knives. True. And it's a pain in the butt, honestly. True. <laughs> True. <laughs> All Just right, everybody. Thanks. Well, I want to I wanna thank Doug Ritter. Thank you so much for coming on. And Thank and, you uh, for having me. Nice to meet you, Carrie. This yeah, you great. too, Doug. We appreciate your work, obviously. So keep kicking ass. I'll, I'll make a phone call to you as soon as uh, I get next week. All right. Sounds good. It. Sounds All good. right. <laughs> and Carrie, it's been great having you. Everybody, go to Grateful Panic. It's been awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, for Jim, we're working his magic behind the switcher. I'm Bob DeMarco saying, don't take dull for an answer. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife. And we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at the knifejunkie.com slash knives. That's the knifejunkie.com slash knives. It's always great talking with Doug Ritter, and I always really enjoy speaking with Carrie too, but it was really good getting them together and uh, kind of seeing how uh, one benefits the other and uh, one, one hand washes the other. Uh, what a great show. So happy to have both of those guys on here. Please be sure to go to kniferights.org. Not only use it to keep yourself up to date on knife laws in your state and the states surrounding but also uh, handy tips about what to do if you need to if you get busted with a knife or or what have you. So uh, go to knifewrites.org uh, and also donate, become a member. You will be happy you did. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher. My name is Bob DeMarco, and it's a pleasure talking with you about knives. So until next time, please don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.